Hey kids, it's Mrs. Rones with your lesson on solving equations that involve decimals. This is a very hypocritical lesson because we say in algebra, never, never, no, dot, ever, do we ever write our answers as a decimal. We always use fractions because they tend to be more precise because decimals cause us to round and also because using fractions sets us up for future lessons. However, uh, this is a necessary lesson, uh, not only for solving equations that involve decimals, but surprisingly, going back and refreshing ourselves on rounding. This is one of those skills that just has been a struggle point for a lot of kids. So I thought that I would, uh, yeah, bring this back up in case you have forgotten. It's a refresher in case you need a reference. This page will serve as a reference for you and you can watch this as many times as you need. So in case you've forgotten the place values, uh, they are here. We always use a zero in front of a decimal, however, as a placeholder. So tens, hundreds, thousands, we're just stepping by a multiple of 10, 10 thousands, hundred thousands, millions, and so forth. It'd be 10 millions, hundred millions, and there we go. Um, so we have done here a review and for each of these rounding exercises we're going to use the same number. And so this says to round to the nearest hundredth. So we are going to look at the number that's in this hundredths position and its neighbor. So none of this is needed. It all drops off. And the beginning part, the five and the point sorry, the 5.9, those also aren't affected uh, almost all the time. And so we are left here with the seven in the hundred spot and the two in the thousand spot. Now there's this idea um, that kids hear that we're either going to round up and round down and that's not what we're doing. We're rounding to the closest hundredth spot and we're using the thousandths place to help us make that decision. So if we just focus on the 72 and ask ourselves, is 72, is that closer to 70 or 80? Well, 70 is closer to, sorry, 72 is closer to 70. So therefore we just leave it as a seven, right? Let's look at another one. Here's our millionths. So if you've forgotten which place value that is, you can look up here or you can count tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, this is our millionths, this is our neighbor eight. And so the rule that you may have heard is, is if it is five or above, you round up if that's a thing, but it's not. And if it's four or below, you round down. Again, not a thing, but um, I always wondered like why? Because I always thought that five is the halfway point. Like why, why is the space between four and five the definitive uh, place? I always thought that five could go either way. Well, if you write all of the digits and include zero, now you can see there's 10 digits here. And this explains why if the digit is five or greater, this would be closer to the next higher whatever position you are thinking of. And then if it's four below, it would be closer to the lesser one. So um, more specifically, I could be looking at all of this, but really let's just focus on here. 18, is that closer to 10 or to 20? It's closer to 20. So therefore, the little rule that we all learned, neighbor eight is five or greater. So that makes this one bump up to two. 5.97250, none of that changes, two. Now, one thing that I see students do a lot is they try to do this kind of daisy chaining where now that I have rounded this, then I round this and then this and then this and then this, and that's not a thing. Um, sometimes one digit bumps another, which we'll see in a moment, but it's not a trickle down effect for all of the digits. Okay, try this next one for the hundred thousandths. tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and here is our neighbor one. One is closer to zero than it is to ten, so that therefore 5.9725, none of those change it. And now you could argue, this is our rounding, right? You could argue that you can drop this zero, um, and that would be fine, it has the same value, 
But please know that in some places, especially in standardized tests, if they ask you to round to the nearest thousands or whatever the place value is and it's zero, uh, look at the instructions carefully. Sometimes they expect for you to use that placeholder zero to show that it's been rounded. And then tenths. This is the one time we're going to have like this daisy chain effect. So 97 is closer to 100 than it is to 90. So therefore, the 7, well, the, we want this to be 100, right? Well, 100 is a three-digit number. This is a two-digit number. So that 100, there we go, turns this into a 6. Now we could leave it at just 6, or I could say 6.0. Okay, great. So uh, for our lesson, we are going to do the same exact thing that we've been doing, but we're going to have some messy solutions and we'll need to know how to round appropriately uh, so that we don't do all of that work to find the solution and then have an incorrect answer. Okay, so let's attempt this question here. Here I have negative 38x minus 39 equals 118. Uh, give this a pause so that you can um, so you can try this out yourself and then start me up again and I'll talk you through it. Okay, hopefully you added 39 to both sides to get negative 38x equals 157. And then you should have divided by negative 38 to get x equals negative 4.131578 and some numbers, right? Okay, so the instructions say to round to the nearest hundredth. Tens, hundredths, neighbor one, don't need that. 31 is closer to 30 than it is to 40. So I'm going to say x, and I'm going to use a special symbol my equal sign is going to look like a wave, and it says x is about negative 4.13, and that's what the solution is going to be. Now, up to this point, every single time we have solved an equation, we have gone back and checked our solution. So because we're an excellent math student, we checked our work by subbing in the solution for the variable and the original equation. But when we do that, we find this strange thing, which I will show you for the sake of time. When we substitute that value in that's been rounded, we get a number that's a little bit off. Now 117 and 94 hundredths is really close to 118. It's not the same though. And that happens because we have rounded our solution. It's slightly inaccurate, and this is why I really prefer fractions. This is called a round-off error. So when you sub in approximate values or values that have been estimated, you will get a result that's close but not quite exact. So this is okay. If you had gotten, say, for example, negative 42 on the left and 118 on the right, then that would have been an indication that maybe you should go back and check your work. Okay, next page. Uh, take a moment, please, and attempt to solve that one. Pause this, and then play again, and we'll get started again. Okay, at this point, we have two terms on each side. It doesn't really matter where you start. I'm just going to add the 49.5. You might have chosen something different, and that's totally fine. I have 54 minus 7.2x equals, there's my 3.4x, and now I must, because of the way that I started mine, add 7.2x, again, yours might be different, but everyone should have this point here, 54 equals 10.6x. If not, something went wrong, give it a pause and go back and check it out again, and you get 5.094. 3 and some numbers equal x. Well, again, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, so tens, hundredths, neighbor 4. 94 is closer to 90 than it is to 100, so I'm going to say x is about 5.09. Okay, now, this is a multi-step equation. There are many opportunities to 
goof, um, unfortunately. And some kids really struggle with these decimals. They may, might write a little bit lightly. They might overlook them. They might not overlook them, but they just might be annoyed by them. So it's not surprising that some students just really dislike these equations just because of the decimals. They make the problem confusing and more difficult to solve. Um, other kids, they don't care, but some kids are really bothered by this. So what if I told you there is another way? Now I'll tell you from the start that I would say about half the kids really prefer this other way and the other half of kids really don't see the point in it. So I will show this to you. That's my obligation. And then you can choose whatever your preference is. So remember, as we've been going, we've learned that we can do whatever we want to an equation as long as we keep the equation balanced. And we do this by whatever we do on one side of the equation, we do to the other. We do the same thing to each side of the equation. So um, because this equation has decimals in the tenth to create tenths all the way across, we can multiply both sides. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> this is what I get for reading my notes and writing at the same time. We can multiply. So sorry. Uh, both sides by 10, and that takes care of our decimals. Or eliminates them. So let me show you what I mean. I can multiply all of this by 10, because what I do on one side, I do to the other. So 4.5 becomes 45. 7.2 becomes 72x. 3.4 becomes 34x. 49.5 becomes 495. And now I can solve this using only whole numbers until I get to the very end. And in class, we said, well, when we do this, are we get, going to get the same answer? Or are we going to get an answer that is off by a power of 10? And we kind of debated about it. And when we work it all the way out, mind blown, we get the same 5.0943 and so forth equals x, or x equals about 5.09. Because we multiplied each side by a power of 10, we kept things uh, the same on both sides. We just inflated both of them proportionally. So as you can see, it really doesn't matter uh, in the outcome which process you decide to follow. So they're not always um, as easy to simplify as this one. So let's talk about some strange ones. Here um, I have, as you look across, two place values, two place values, two place values, two place values. So this time I'm going to multiply by 100 to move everything two place values to the right. And so... For some kids, it's really great to have these equations with no decimals. And for other kids, they say big numbers. I don't like these big, big numbers. Now here I have two place values, two, two, and one. So we will still multiply by 100 to take care of these two place values. And I'll show you what we do when we get to the end here. Okay, so here's place value 1, and then now placeholder 2. Because if this had a decimal, or this had a digit after, it would be 0. Okay, try this last one. It's kind of tricky. I have 1 value, 3, none, 2. What would I multiply by, and what would the new equation become? All right, I'm going to multiply by 1,000. That will move my decimal three places to the right, and so it will become, oh, 6, 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 64,000 x's minus 562,123 equals 34, now has three zeros after it, so it's 34,000 plus 
3, 4, 6, 5, add that 0. And so those mean the same. So if that's helpful for you, great. And if not, it's great that you know about it, but you do not have to use it. You'll get the same result. Okay, um, we spent quite a lot of time on this last page, but I don't want to camp on it too long in the video. Um, but I do want to show it to you. And so this is my teacher copy. I cannot zoom out any further, so I'm going to be as clear as I can. So uh, this is a special situation where we're studying an equation that uses um, distributed property. And this is a special circumstance. So what I have is two examples of the same equation that have been worked out, one correctly and one incorrectly. And so I had you guys study these to see which one is right and then where did it go wrong for the one that's not right. And so we determined by substituting back into our variable that this one is correct, that this one is not correct. And so when we studied further, we found that things were stopped lining up. When you look side to side here, when we multiplied this line by a power of 10. And what we concluded was when we multiply this outside number by a power of 10, that will then be multiplied to these two. So that power of 10 is being kind of distributed here as well. But when we multiply the inside numbers also by 10, it's like multiplying this by a power of 10 and then by another power of 10. So it's like multiplying the left by a power of 100 and then only multiplying the other side by a power of 10. And that's why the left side is more inflated. You have much larger numbers than the right hand side. So that is why we get this incorrect answer. So the conclusion that we came to for this is if you are one who likes to multiply your equation by a power of 10 so that you do not have to worry about the decimals, please use caution when you have an equation that is um, using the distributed property. A couple ways that you can go about this. Uh, 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 strategy one is to just solve it using the decimals and just be super, super careful. Another strategy is to go on ahead and multiply each side by a power of 10. So this is multiplied by 10. And on the side that uses the distributed property, only multiply that outside number by a power of 10. So you could do it that way. Or another strategy that's not here is you can go ahead and do your distributive property and get those decimals. So over here, it would look like this. Okay. And then multiply this whole thing by, this would be 100 to eliminate the decimals there. So you have a few different options. Okay. And that's for you to just mess with and, and, and I don't know, experiment with until you find something that you really like. Um, there's no, there's no troubles with, you know, solving it the old school way, the normal way. And then remember to check your answer at the end, just to make sure that things didn't go wrong. Okay. Let's look at the corresponding homework. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, but the instructions for the top section are needlessly confusing. So it says to perform any indicated operation. There are no operations here. So this, that, that part's done for one and two, then round to the nearest 10th and then round to the nearest hundredth. And that's the, the original number. So, um, one second. Sorry, I had to grab a, grab a calculator. So what that means is, so, oh, forget it. If I take two, really, really? Ah, technology, okay. So if I do two, four, oh, three, two, one, minus two, one, eight, two, one, seven, double check, okay. So that means I'm going to round to the nearest 10th so two point, there's 10th, neighbor one, 21 is closer to 20 than it is to 30, so 2.2. .2. And then I'm going to round, again, this number, not this number, but this number to the nearest hundredth. I'm not sure why, but that's confusing for kids. So tenths, hundredths, so 10 is closer, obviously, to 10 than to 10. <laughs> so 2.2 .2 and 2.21. These, then you'd round to the closest tenth and to the closest hundredth looking at its neighbors. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, for numbers seven through really 24, you are solving and then rounding to the nearest 
hundredth. I want to caution you on this section here on question number 22. If you are one who likes to multiply your equations by a power of 10 to get rid of those decimals, you totally can do that. Just be careful here um, because that could give you a problem like on that last page of your notes. Um, I recommend if you're not quite sure if you like to multiply your equation by a power of 10, um, that you maybe try it a few times and then try doing it the regular way for the others. That's up to you. All right, for these bottom equations, I'd like for you to again solve however you know, um, but then challenge yourself to write an equation to represent that situation because that's what our goal is. Um, this year's class, we saved this question. We're going to come to it later. Um, so if you are my 1920 kids, um, that's not a sign just for now, but in the future it might be. So make sure you're staying tuned to instructions. Hey, if you need any other help, do not hesitate to email me. You're never a trouble or bother. I wouldn't offer if I didn't mean it. So, guys, I will see you in class. Have a great night. Thanks for watching.